It's not easy living on a dying planet, but it is easy to feel overwhelmed when it comes to making changes and taking action to try and save it. Where do you start? Is it even worth it? Can you really make a difference? Welcome to the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast, where we attempt to answer these questions by spilling the tea on living sustainably in a world that's going to shit. I'm Brandy. And I'm Hannah. And for years, we've been navigating the big, messy, gray area of caring about our planet. It hasn't always been smooth sailing, but we're not giving up yet. So brew yourself a cup of tea, get comfy, and let's try and navigate that gray area together. Hello, give a shitter. This is Hannah. And this is Brandy. And you are listening to episode number 16 of the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast. Woo! Welcome back. Yeah. I was going to make a cup of tea, but I just had a cup of soup and it's a bit too warm for soup. So I'm a bit too warm now. So I have ice water. And I also have my bottle of water. Do we expect anything else at this point? No, no, probably not. No, no tea. No tea is being consumed. But we do have some tea to talk about. We do. It's your tea this week. Yeah. Um, right. So we'll see where the conversation ends up going. My my brain dump of an idea was to talk about money and spending, consuming, mm-hmm. um, because I feel like, well, I mean, I think you were there when, when it started. I, I've been a bit spendy lately. I think it's on a down <laughs> peak, but when we were in New York this summer, I, um, I don't know what, like what came over me. I think it's, it's just normal for me to, for like my spending to like come in waves. Yeah. But it's been a lot of stickers. I bought the stickers. I bought <laughs> a lot of stuff from the body shop, which is my new favorite oh, store. That's true. And then since yeah. I bought some things from Lush and my vintage use has been out of control. I think I, I'm doing <laughs> one more thing and then I'm deleting the app because it's been a bit much. But it just got me thinking about spending and guilt around spending mm. in general. Yeah. Because I, I've felt guilty and then I look gone back and forth on it like well why do I feel guilty should I feel guilty is it bad to spend money on things you don't need right uh, yeah it's interesting um you mentioned vintage as well as something that you're feeling a bit bad about because I feel like for you that's kind of you know a way where you're like well I'm happy to sh- I'm shopping second hand so I feel okay about what I'm buying yeah. But yeah. there's obviously there's something there's another limit going on there. And, and do you think it's just kind of feeling guilt about having too much stuff or where do well, you think that's coming from? Well, first of all, for those who don't know, Vinted is a secondhand clothing app. It's like eBay, right. but it's like it's grown from clothes to how everything stuff. Yeah, everything. <laughs> um and it's just super easy. If that's the yeah. thing, it's it's too easy. But yeah, secondhand clothing and like food have been my like I mean, I'm human. I I like to buy things to as mm-hmm. a as a, a hobby, which right. started way back in high school uh, to make myself feel better. Um, yeah, out of boredom for all sorts of reasons. But my kind of quote unquote safe zones, so to speak, uh, have been secondhand things like Vinted or Umana or thrift stores and food uh, mm-hmm. because those are areas that I well we need to eat and well. I have enough clothing, but it's just a, f- a fun thing for me. Um, so it's all relative. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, I think it's more of like, I don't know, feeling like I should feel guilty for like mm-hmm. consuming things more than I normally do. I mean, with Vinted, it's, I mean, that brings up a separate thing of like all the packaging that comes with it. Um, and I tend right, to look true. for like local stuff. Um, people who are nearby so it's not traveling as far um, and then I try to like deconstruct the packaging as best I can and recycle what can be recycled mm-hmm. but um, yeah I think it's a bit excessive um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, how many vintage like packages that. are we talking about Brandy uh, we don't need to talk about that <laughs> um, <laughs> but no it just got me thinking of like I mean I have the money I'm not in debt and mm-hmm. buying things I, I want. Um, right. So is that bad? And I jotted down, like, my thoughts, mm-hmm. like, or do I just feel like I should feel bad because there's this pressure that comes with, you know, caring about the planet that I shouldn't consume unless, like, I absolutely need to? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. Have you ever felt like guilty about spending or like what are your what's your general? Yeah, for sure. I think as well, I definitely go through phases. Um, I guess especially probably with clothes where I don't buy anything for months. And then I'll just be like, ah, and buy like four or five things at once. And then like, that's it. Um, And that feels excessive to me. Um, But, you know, it's hard, I I guess, how, who, who are you comparing yourself with? And, Mm. um, and yeah, recent, actually, I just had that thing. um, And, and I actually went to Vinted because I was like, okay, but I know about Vinted now. So I'm going to like buy my like, you know, five new dresses that, you know, I don't really need um, through Vinted. And I do feel better about that than having like, you know, buying new um, for sure. I definitely felt that was, that felt better. But it's also true. I look in my closet and I'm like, I have so much stuff and I don't need this much stuff. And there is that element of, okay, it's secondhand or even when it's not, because I definitely also buy things new and I, you know, got a dress from Primark the other day. Like I'm also not always just buying new from more ethical brands. I'm also buying from, you know, quote unquote fast fashion brands. Um, But where is I going with this? I got lost. Buying things you don't need to, even if it's on business. Right. Or... And even, yeah, and even secondhand, that is still, you know, that's still contributing to this mindset that we have like unending resources and that it's so, <laughs> that it's okay to get whatever we want. Mm. Which I feel kind of bad saying that because I also don't like putting restrictions and saying like, oh no you shouldn't do that Mm -hmm. but there is a limit Mm -hmm. and also we're talking you know this this whole thing is coming from a very we're both from very wealthy countries and live in a very wealthy country Mm -hmm. there is no way you know the the world can't sustain how a small proportion of the world's population is living now Mm -hmm. if everyone lived like this then I mean it's impossible Mm-hmm. but also then who am I to say that's also bigger questions right who am I to say to someone well no you can't live like me right because it's not sustainable right <laughs> I mean yeah I think I I have a tendency of when it comes to consuming of like ping-ponging between like one extreme and the other like the mm-hmm. black and white if you will and just bypassing the gray altogether because <laughs> I think with the buying second hand it I think this is why greenwashing is, is is so successful because it removes like the guilt, like oh I'm buying secondhand, mm-hmm. so it's fine. I can just consume, consume, consume. I think I'm in need of like a recalibration, like because just because something is secondhand, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that there's no risk of overconsuming. Because right. you know, my closet's full too. I have all the clothes I need. I'm buying out of want. I don't know what I'm buying, want uh, enjoyment boredom. Like it, the, mm-hmm. like having this app on my phone, once this last package arrives, I need to delete it because it's too <laughs> easy. It's like I, I make the rounds between, you know, like Instagram and Facebook yeah. and, oh, let me go on Vinted without right. a specific purpose. And I think I started going on it for a specific purpose, looking for a specific item that I couldn't find in the mm-hmm. secondhand shops locally because there is a lot more selection on it. So yeah. I've like removed all the barriers and it's just become like a... I don't know, like, what do they say? Like, um, notifications on social media. It's, it's like a slot machine. It's like you get that, like, rush of adrenaline. It's like, oh, well, let me see what else I can find. Well, wait a minute. Right. Like, I, I, don't, I don't need it. I don't even necessarily yeah. want in that moment. It's, like, become a habit. Because I think I've removed too many barriers and forgotten that it's all relative. It's not, like, I don't know, I reference all the time. Recycling is a good place to start, bad place to stop. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not, okay, I'm buying secondhand. Let me remove all Mm -hmm. thoughts on why I'm consuming if that makes sense right um do you like do you think there is something negative or that the the impact of being able to consume kind of endlessly does that have a negative impact on us 
as people or as you on you as a person Mm -hmm. let's be more specific I think it I mean it's a time thing too like it's Mm -hmm. I'm spending all this time browsing on an app for things I don't need when I could be taking a walk reading a book Mm -hmm. um you know doing other creative things right Um, because one thing I hear people say in response to overconsuming is to create more than you consume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And I guess there is that, um, you know, as uh, obviously I feel like I have less limits on what I can do now as an adult with my own income that's only for me. That when I think back to, for example, being a teenager or when I haven't been working, I'd be much more creative in some mm-hmm in some ways because there's a kind of a limit there that that forces you to be like okay I actually can't buy the perfect the exact dress that I want Mm -hmm. so like how can I style it or how can I you know change it or Mm -hmm. um or whatever that solution might be yeah I think limits can definitely breed creativity Mm mm-hmm you know, we we just are so, even if we're buying secondhand and we're consuming in a way that feels more ethical to us, or as you, and there's like, I don't know, it just, I'm not sure it's healthy. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, like I said, I feel like I'm a bit on the down, down peak. I don't know how to say it. Like I'm, I'm consuming less, like that, that wave mm-hmm. is subsiding, but I feel like it was less of like me wanting to consume things. And I feel like it kind of like took over. Like I just got comfortable with it. Right. And when you were talking, I thought about like, well, this is, this is why lifestyle inflation happens. I don't know if that's the right term. You make more, Mm -hmm. you just, you just spend more. Like you don't end up saving more because you just like fill that. Say fill that void. That doesn't really make sense. But you just, you just like you fill the space. Like you fill the space you're in, the size of your home. The more money you make, you just find things to spend the money on um Mm -hmm. because without because of like the society we live in and the capitalist nature of it all Mm. you know it is too easy to i was gonna say be a cog in the wheel but i don't think that's what i meant it's so easy to just get swept up into like how everybody else is doing things because that's kind of the system we're in Mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah it does and um i don't know it can be quite hard to make all the different elements tangible, mm. right? Especially, again, especially the more you earn, frankly, because, yeah, because a, a money kind of creates that disconnect between between what you've done to earn that money and what you, what is being, what you're buying with it. Mm. You know, like, is this thing worth the eight hours that I spent on it? Um, and again, I think that's harder to kind of maintain that. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's just a mindset thing. You just have to keep, I, I, ugh, I'm i not being very clear. I guess what I want to say is like when I was earning more on like an hourly wage or which tend to be um, when you're earning, you're on a more low, on a lower salary, although not necessarily, it depends on the industry as well. It was more like, okay, this literally cost me like three hours of work in a restaurant. Do I want to pay that? Whereas when you're kind of on a monthly salary or on a fixed salary, I think it's harder to keep that in mind. Yeah, I've definitely heard that as like advice for, I think it was when I was like getting out of debt, consumer debt Mm -hmm. and school loans, um, of thinking about the money. Yeah, in terms of hours worked to get there. Um, Mm -hmm. And... And yeah, that, that does help t- is like a good perspective shift because it's not just this, you know, swipe of a card or handing over some paper bills. It's thinking about it in terms of like what, yeah, what you did to earn the money. Right. Like idea of like, yeah, making it a bit harder to part with, but. Um. And do you think, um, for example, when you went on this most recent, your recent, recent um, spending spree, I guess spending we'll call it. spree. <laughs> Can you, other than getting comfortable with it, can you identify certain things that maybe um, kind of triggered it a little bit? Was it that, okay, I'm on a holiday, so, you know, I deserve to enjoy or, 
you're buying for someone else or like what can you kind of are there any trigger points where you think oh that maybe this was why I started off on that spending spree yeah I was just thinking about that I, yeah definitely the aspect of like being on holiday like mm-hmm. I'm free to like do whatever I want whenever I want um and yeah the mix of like buying things for myself just because I wanted to buying things for other yeah. people because I find enjoyment in that as well and then I think it just yeah. like carried over right <laughs> yeah and it is that that element of like what is kind of socially bound up in in the consumerism what is the emotion we're like you know trying to attain and um like I definitely know I was like was just had a breakup so I was like buying clothes because I was like oh I want to feel good right you know that was like part of it and like okay I'm gonna go out and I'm not gonna wear something I've already got I want to wear something new because I want to feel like nice about myself yeah and is that bad to buy something to make yourself feel better I don't I think like it's, it's it's a big bad. gray area it's that a is gray. it is a gray area but it's like I you know fundamentally the only reason I can do this is because the world is an inequitable mm-hmm. and I'm one of the lucky ones Mm-hmm. who's not making the clothes but who's buying the clothes mm-hmm. and if I had chosen a more I mean oh, it's hard isn't it but like if I'd have chosen the more equitable route of buying those clothes to make myself feel good I would have maybe bought one thing mm. because I would have been buying from a more sustainable fashion brand that would have been more expensive Mm -hmm. and then that's what I could have afforded I couldn't have afforded to just go and buy five things I think that's where I'm like oh I mean I think we're both kind of products of the societies we've grown up in is that Mm -hmm. is that we like our whole lives have been not even told directly but like advertised to and like you Mm -hmm. buy buy this thing to solve this problem, whatever it is, whether it is boredom or sadness, whatever it is. And then, so of course we're, we're like wired to like want more of that Mm -hmm. because we do, I think get that like adrenaline rush of, of a purchase. Um, It's like, Uh, yeah, no. I was going to say how it's like relate everything to food. It's like how, why we crave, you know, excess salt, oil and sugar. Cause that used to mean our Mm -hmm. survival, but now, you know, like our, that's sort of like we have our bodies, our, humans haven't really caught up so we're still like hardwired to like want more of that Mm -hmm. even though that now means you know lifestyle diseases etc um so i think it's it's difficult to get out of like a a, like consumerist trap or cycle because yeah we're constantly told sold to advertise that that more is the answer right yeah, it's so, so that's why I feel like I need like a recalibration and to reprioritize. Okay, why am I buying things? What can I do instead? Um, what barriers can I put in place? Yes, but, um, but but ultimately, no, I don't think it's inherently bad to buy something because you want to feel better or right to avoid boredom. I mean, obviously, it depends on your individual situation and whether you are in debt and whether that's making other things worse, but. For me personally, I don't think it's inherently bad. I just feel like it's gotten a little bit out of control. Yeah. Yeah. I have savings goals that I that I could be working towards more. Right. I guess it's that having um, you know, lots of different things in the bag for dealing with a situation. It's like, okay, and which ones are the most appropriate? Like, okay, I'm bored, so I'm gonna scroll. And that might be through Instagram or that might be through Vinted and then I might buy. But then also, you know, maybe I have other things that I want to have nearby that I could work on when I'm bored. Um, Mm -hmm. Just a bit more effort. Yeah. (laughs) You know. Yeah. But but often pays off more. Right. Because when you but buy quite- like a physical thing, even a secondhand item, like you get that little rush. Mm-hmm. But I know there are a lot of studies that say like the wanting of an item brings you more joy mm-hmm. and pleasure than the actual buying of it. And how can- do you 
do you find that because I know you're when you're in your kind of settled spending periods that you you know you've told me that you'll have like um on vintage you'll have like notifications for certain items that you're specifically looking for um do you find that that gives you more satisfaction when you've been kind of looking for something for a while and you're like there it is yeah I do and I I like to I'll like favorite things Mm -hmm. and I've I don't know, there's something about, like, I just feel good about, like, having a favorited item and, like, okay. going back and looking at it. And then, yeah, having something that I'm searching for. It's, like, a, a mission, like, to find right. a specific thing. And then you find it and it feels good. And then it's, like, okay, well, what's the next thing? Okay. All right. So that's, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. And I, I don't think I'm alone in this. I mean, I hope not, listener. No, but, no, like, no. <laughs> let us know what issues you've had around consuming, spending, maybe unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Because, yeah, how, like, I think the ultimate question, like, I'm trying to to answer, which I don't think I'll have a solid answer for, is how how do we not get caught up living in the capitalist society that we do? How do we not get caught up in over-consuming and consuming unnecessarily? Yeah. Yeah, because I guess. I, because it... I don't, I don't want to, like, support it. I don't want to. But, I mean, I have to. Like, we as humans, like, we have to consume things right. to survive. Even if you live in the woods, you have to consume but it's, yeah, it's finding, like, an appropriate level right. for ourselves. Mm. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, some of that is about, you know, deciding what the values are and what, you know, as mm. we talk about a lot, what are the things that are important to you and, you know, trying to really stick to that even when it's hard to be like, okay, I'm not going to buy from this shop. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we've talked about in other episodes, that's not something that's easy Mm -mm. for sure. I think that Um, it can be appropriate at times to set those like hard limits, mm -hmm. um, which I've definitely done in the past. Like I've done like no spend months Mm -hmm. and got really strict with it. Like I was very fortunate. I mean, I lived near the beach, so in walking distance, I'd walk to the beach, I'd stop by my local library and like rent a DVD back when I had a computer, I could play it. Um, and those were my weekends for a while. (laughs) Yeah. But and it was fine for the timing. I was trying to like jumpstart my like debt repayment and savings. Right. But I, I do, I find enjoyment in, in buying things and going out to restaurants, travel. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's, yeah, you made a good point about like values. And I think that's definitely part of the recalibration is, yeah. What are my values? What do I want to spend my time and money mm-hmm. on that I know my future self will thank me for? Right. Not just my five minutes from now so (laughs) yeah yeah it's um yeah definitely a gray area I just feel yeah both on an individual like what are your values what things are you compromising by consuming what things are you fulfilling you know what's the best way and then on a larger scale of like equity who's making your clothing Mm mm-hmm um yeah I think knowledge recognizing recognizing privilege or also not you know obviously I'm feel like in my life right now I'm talking from a space of privilege but of course even in you know western countries and in the UK and the states and Spain there are people who you know have to purchase the cheapest clothing because Mm -hmm. that is the only thing that's available yeah and I, th- um, I think buying out of need I think yeah that's definitely that's right. a separate thing um oh, we're getting our 10 minute zoom warning so we'll try and wrap this up within the next few minutes yeah yeah I think right I, needs versus wants. needs versus wants because I mm-hmm. I'm not talking about I'm not overspending on needs I'm overspending on wants. yeah and things that I don't need um, yeah so I think even just having this conversation and like saying it out loud um yeah I feel like a no spend November might be coming up. See, like, anyway. I hear things like that. And you're like, oh, yeah. What do, like, okay. Yeah. Tell me what you feel. What uh, you feel I feel that? resistance to that. I think it's okay. I, I know Gretchen Rubin has these like four tendencies, this really good book. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll link it in the show notes. Um, and I, I'm sometimes a questioner and sometimes a rebel. So like I said, not like when I'm unsure about something, knowledge, looking up like the why behind uh-huh. things can help me determine um, or change my habits. And then other times I tend to rebel. Like if I set too strict limits on myself, mm-hmm. I will rebel against that ju- for the 
sole reason that like there is a limit in place. <laughs> so yeah. I am um, to be fair, I'm saying that, but I, the, I think the most effective one I've done, not maybe not so much with clothing, but just when I've wanted to bring spending down, um, was actually, um, I think I've talked about her before, Emma from the Broke Generation. She suggests, she's like, oh, like she'd rather have one week out of the month where she spends nothing and puts that to savings or spends very little, whatever she sets for herself, and then kind of live normally the other three weeks Mm. than to try and like reduce all four weeks. Yeah. I like that. Into into like spending slightly less Mm -hmm. so maybe that's like i mean i think any any sort of limitation no spend day week month Mm -hmm. people do whole years like that that's great if you go into it acknowledging that it's like a short-term thing and that that's not going to be your new standard because that can be realistic unrealistic for a lot Mm -hmm. of people i think i find that when the more i know and i'm aware of like my financial situation then the less likely i am to just overspend or spend without thinking Because if like I don't really know what's going on with my bank account, I don't I don't know why that is. It's just easier to just spend because mm-hmm. oh like I out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but the more I know, the more I go into my spreadsheet and update it and see like how quickly right. I could accomplish, you know, certain savings goals. Um if I don't overspend this month. Overspend, just buy things uh, on top of the necessities. So I think I've 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 started doing that and I'm that's I think that's contributed to coming out of this uh right okay you've kind of got a hold of it yeah so what would you say if you know um someone else was looking to take action I think who someone else who has the same problem I think it would depend on their exact situation but um and we can leave we'll leave links and Mm -hmm. maybe even more like bullet points on like specific action items we can start including those a bit more in the show notes because those are easy ways to look up how to, you know, what's the one I really liked that I used to hear all the time, put like your credit card in a glass of water and put it in the freezer. <laughs> like that's a barrier. <laughs> that's a limit limitation you could set. All right. There are other tips and tricks like that, but I, I jotted down some questions that um, maybe listeners could ask themselves. Yeah. Mindset that, you know, switching your mindset, tweaking it. I think that can have longer. Mm hmm lasting impacts so questions ask yourself why do you consume the way you do what brings you joy where can you shift your focus how can you create more than you consume yeah we talked about that Mm -hmm. when was the last time you took a walk or just went outside just because um i think there's a whole other potential for an episode about getting out in nature and i think that that's definitely a way to combat over consuming because you see especially in terms of you know, sustainability, trying to live more environmentally friendly. It like puts kind of the why right in front of your face. Like, okay, this mm-hmm. is why I want to have less of an impact on the planet because, you know, because parks are beautiful. Oceans are beautiful. Like let's keep them. Let's not destroy yeah. our environment. So those are my final thoughts. What about you? What would you say to? Um. Yeah, I think that's, I think being yeah those questions are really good I think there's an element of being very honest with ourselves Mm -hmm. about what things are needs and what things are wants yes the minimalists have a great Um, article on that I will link that yeah and I'm I'm definitely not very good at that but um I think it can be easy to think or want to think that our needs are greater than they are yes Oh, or the other way. I mean, I guess, but (laughs) for me anyway, it's easy to think that my needs are greater than they are. Mm -hmm. And actually, when we realize how much of what we own are just wants, maybe that can help put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. And that that will, of course, vary for everyone, depending on the life that they they lead and the responsibilities they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. There's something else, um, a quote I had jotted down that, that I told myself almost daily when I was getting out of debt. And I think there's there's a bit of caveat that assuming that you do have everything you need, which we have for this conversation, is that you have enough, you are enough. Like in an empty room, you are complete. I think I'm stealing that quote from someone. I don't remember who. Um, <laughs> and I would tell myself that because, you know, I feel like 
in general, I feel like mantras, I feel, they feel silly telling yourself whether it's in a mirror or in your head. But that mm-hmm. one I like made myself do on my like morning walks to work back when I walked to work in okay. LA. And yeah, you have enough. You are enough. You are complete yeah. in an empty room. That part of it. Yeah, it's true. Wow. I, that, might, that, might be the, that might be the minimalist. I can't remember if I remember who, <laughs> who I stole that from. Yeah. So yeah, something to to sit with, to ponder, and yeah, we'll leave links to more specific, I guess, mm-hmm. action things with barriers and budget spreadsheets, yeah. maybe, and um, yeah, deleting apps, unsubscribing stuff like that it can definitely be helpful. Mm-hmm. So I think those alongside with like the mindset piece and those questions. Yeah. So yeah, let us know, listener, if this was helpful. And yeah, I think we'll do a future episode on like specific companies. Uh, You know, like the Primark one. I I like that one. I think that one has actually brought us like search traffic because people want to know, you know, how sustainable certain brands are. So, so yeah, future episode ideas. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Amazon, Shein. I think those could be good, good future episodes to examine. Yeah. Yeah, so let us know what you thought about this episode um, yeah. on our Instagram, at the T on Sustainable Living. Um, you can leave us a voice note at the T on yeah. Sustainable Living dot com slash contact. And we might feature in a future episode. Kelly, talking to you. I'm still waiting on your voice note to feature. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, well. Shooter. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Tea on Sustainable Living podcast. Now, go share it with a friend, a co-worker, a partner, a family member, or whoever. A pet? Your cat? (laughs) Someone on the street? (laughs) Whoever you think could use a little more support on their sustainability journey, share it. Uh, You can send them over to our website, theteonsustainableliving.com. And while you're there, check out the show notes for more info on today's topic. All right, give a shudders. To you later. (laughs) Get it? To you later, as in see you later. So funny. Brandy. (laughs) 